just pretty okay. Pretty, she she's definitely more elite in her bracket than Kyle currently is in the tight end rankings. That's impressive. Yeah. I'll have to do some research. And, so I and can her check rankings her would be the the human race. Big dogs are in the house. A fun ride. Bye, Felicia. Inside the lane, drive, play up. Oh, my goodness! Where did he come from? Oh, behind the back, jam by the big team. This is not Detroit, man. This is the Super Bowl. Ain't nobody got time for that. Practice like this? F*** up. We f*** up. Cash, homie. And boom goes the dynamite. Clocks here the shit, so. Home run! Welcome back, Lou Collins! Welcome back to Thunderdome for yet another just puts the fond digs in the Hall of Fame right now edition of Andy Must Die Minnesota Sports Talk. Kind of. I'm your not-so-humble co-host at Andy Carlson Show, writing Shaka, my partner in crime, uh, a woman who wears more burger than she eats, uh, at Di Murphy MN. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Andy. Now, that's going to be a callback. Uh, well, well, we'll get to that. Uh, we're on the Twitter at Andy Must Die, and the website is AndyMustDie.com. Uh, well, I guess I didn't have to wait too long for the payoff on that. So, uh, Di and I got to hang out in person, IRL as it were, and you got to meet the Uncle Nick, uh, my consigliere, my minion, as it were. <laughs> Your minion? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure he loves that. No, he, he's okay with it because he loves Despicable Me. Oh, well, I do too. I love the minions. Yeah. Now, we hung out in Blue Door Pub, St. Paul. Great time. Uh, was had by all. Sparks flew, motions ran high. What, what was your take on the meeting? On, y- on the meeting? Yeah. It was fun. I had a blast. I would hang out with you guys anytime. Now, hmm. Now I, I forget. What would you have again? Um, I had the Jiffy Burger. Yeah, that's the one with the peanut butter on it. Now you you chastised me a little bit because I got the the bacon, uh, juicy Lucy. Because uh, whenever, because I've actually never been to that Blue Door before. I've been, just been to the Minneapolis one. But when I go to a place where I know I'm gonna be multiple times, uh, eventually I like to start from like their most simple thing and then eventually move up you know what i mean i don't have that kind of patience you, you just go for it i just want what i want when i want it oh you, you're not thinking oh, like, oh yeah we need to go back there because in three trips i'm trying x no <laughs> not at all i don't know anyone who does that uh, so you, you're just like live in the moment you're, you're like a like a mayfly <laughs> I, apparently all right, fine. I've never been compared to a mayfly, but all right. All right. But Di and I hung out. It was a good time. Uh, she had enough cleavage for the both of us. So that's always fun. Oh, wow. <laughs> and we got a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. Uh, Vikings, of course, are down in Mankato, the jewel of South Central uh, Minnesota. Uh, outdoor hockey is going to be a thing. Twins are kind of shiting themselves. Uh, go for football. It's come back. It's also going to be a thing, baby. And then our Twitter Poll of the week, if you could switch spots with one current Minnesota athlete, who would it be? We got some varying answers. Good stuff. Now, before we get to that, who would you switch spots with? Just as a little appetizer. Um, for me? Yeah. And this is purely very selfish reasons. Yeah. I would like, to, a couple of reasons. I would like to be Everson Griffin. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You want to know why? Yes. Um, he gets to see like Harry and Hunter naked, like on the reg. Also, he gets to hit people really hard. Yeah. So that's that's who I'd want to be. It's a very oddly specific reasons. Um. Well, you know, I mean, I've seen Hunter with clothes on. I can't even imagine what he looks like with his clothes off. Now, I for for spoiler, I would switch spots with Kyle Rudolph because his wife. 
or his girlfriend's uh, hot. His, his lady friend uh, at, at camp is uh, it's pretty okay. Just pretty okay. Pretty, she she's definitely more elite in her bracket than Kyle currently is in the tight end rankings. That's impressive. Yeah. I'll have to do some research. And, so I can and her, check her rankings out. would be the the human race. And uh, uh, funny little side note: her apparently her last name is Nine, like ac- the actual number nine. And then okay. uh, she was a cheerleader at Notre Dame, and Rudolph wore number nine when he played for the Irish, which is weird. Okay. That is kind of strange. That is extremely odd. What is her first name? I don't remember. I want to look her up. She did sneeze on me. I I, I did hear that, actually, on the podcast. All right, so let's dive in. Vikings are down in Mankato. I was down there uh, over the weekend, and, yeah, just good times were had by all. Mankato, and also, I, I got the benefit, it wasn't hot as balls, so there wasn't a lot of... You were lucky, yeah. because last year when Ted and I were down there, it yeah. was horrible. Yeah. Now, it, it got you know pretty sunny. I, I got a fairly good tan. I'm about as tan as Adrian now, and y- you know, it was uh, you know sunny, like 80s, mid-80s, uh, except it wasn't humid at all, and they got really lucked out. You really did. It was. And, you know, my sundresses, you know, just taking a page out of your book, uh, whatever, fairly well. I, I think I wore a dress once down there. Did you? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Now, from the reports that are coming out, uh, what have you been keeping tabs on? As far as the Vikings? Yeah. I mean, obviously Diggs, Stefan Diggs is a huge story. Um, yeah, I wasn't expect. I mean, I, you know, I'd heard he... From what I had known, he had the potential, uh-huh. but for him to be as solid as he appears he is at his age yeah. and as a rookie is pretty damn impressive. And unfortunately, I think what that means is Marcus Sherrills is not going to be with this team. Um, I'd actually go against that. I, I think Sherrills is going to be pretty safe. Why? Uh, mostly because uh, he's working on sec- second team corner and also as far as punt return goes, uh, he is getting uh, the majority of the snaps back there from what I saw. He's also you know, involved in all the special teams. You know, first team punt gunner with Trey Waynes, who you know, we'll talk about in a bit. And I, I think especially if they go hang on two quarterbacks, I, I think they're going to go heavy wide receiver and heavy corner, uh, keeping six and seven respectively. So I actually think Thielen and Cheryl's are going to be relatively safe uh, on this roster. I agree with Thielen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't, I just think Cheryl's is not a very good cornerback. Mm. I mean, he's small, he's, he's very undersized, mm-hmm. you know, Zimmer's talked about, he, you know, there isn't a comment he made about, you know, no five, nine, you know, corners it, that that's basically Cheryl's. Mm-hmm. So I don't, I just, I'd like to see the kid make it. I mean, yep. he, he battles every year for that spot and he earns it and I would love to see them keep him. Yep. And obviously he's a, a a hometown or you know a state kid but i i don't know I just, uh, playing I, devil's avocado <clears throat> yeah everyone the mother is talking about um stefan diggs punt return prowess even though he hasn't returned punts since his freshman year at maryland yeah. and yeah you know, we we're talking about this we we're spitballing this um you know just like after practice and yeah you know, zimmer's a defensive minded guy and is always going to be relatively conservative when it comes to offense and special teams uh, just from like a, a complete conservative mindset. And field position is going to be his absolute paramount MO. And, you, you know, you're late in the season and you know, you're fielding a punt at Lambeau week 17. You're going to set up a, a game-winning drive. Yeah, Who do you want back there? You know, the kid who's been a top six and a top three uh, punt returner as far as average the past two seasons, uh, a veteran guy who you know is not going to muff it, or a kid who you know, has never played 17 weeks in a season and, in fact, has never completed a complete college season healthy, uh, back there chilling, could make a mental error. And you know, a muff punt is probably one of the biggest game changers uh, there are in a football game. Absolutely. And considering that, I would, I would kind of have to agree with you. Um, the only cut I think on Cheryl's is that he's kind of one note. He's a punt returner. Mm-hmm. He's not a very good cornerback at all. Um, and Diggs is not. I mean, he's a multiple threat kind of guy. Um, but I see what you're saying. I mean, in getting in Zimmer's head, that's that's exactly what he'd be thinking. Yeah, I could see it where 
Cheryl's starts on the 53. And as far as like digs coming along, we'll see in practice and there might be a couple injuries, a wide receiver uh, and he, you know, digs might even get a couple of shots of punt return. We'll see if Cheryl stays healthy. I can see potentially moving on down the line once they're absolutely certain that digs ready because yeah, everyone's drooling over the kid and uh, just looking at him, he's definitely more than a deep threat. Uh, he was, uh, looking really good in intermediate routes, uh, beating Cheryl's, beating Price. Uh, he even got the best of Newman a couple times. And it, I, I can see the, the hype behind the kid. I'm pretty excited about him as well. Uh, should be a little tempered, though, uh, since he is going up against number twos. And uh, he, even though he's going to be playing twos and threes in the preseason, probably going to light things up, uh, I think we got to calm down a little bit. No, we do. And, and that's the danger when a kid looks that good. Mm -hmm is because immediately all of the rubes go, oh my God, like he's the next, you know, whatever, Megatron. He's a rookie, okay? Right. He's very young. He's kind of, He may look really great, but like you said, he's going against twos. You know, he's, I would love to see them, and maybe they will, you know, use him more with the ones. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, it, we do need to calm down. I mean, I am giddy about it because I think he has huge, huge, huge potential. And the other thing that I'm giddy about is that apparently Cordero has figured out that um, it takes work and a brain mm. to play football and uh, seems to have kind of figured some things out. What do you think? A uh, well, couple, couple things I saw with Cordero. Num number one, he's listed at six foot two, but I, I could swear to God he's at least six four. I mean, it, it might be, you know, young kids kind of grow as they keep going. Like even if you can have a growth spurt in their 20s, but that's kind of here nor there. Uh, second one is I was really disappointed uh, as far as Cordero working with the twos, working against twos, uh, you know, just in practice and especially the night scrimmage. There's nothing of note that comes to mind. I mean, there wasn't a spot where he beat Jabari Price uh, on a like a seven route for a nice long gain. Uh, yeah, nothing like that. Uh, unless they're absolutely keeping things under wraps. Like I remember on the walkthrough, they did have one uh, reverse play uh, with Cordero, but they also ran it with Wright, so it may not specifically be for CP. And uh, unless Norv is playing everything completely close to the chest, I, I haven't seen a whole lot that's distinguished uh, core Daryl, uh, so far in camp, like e even one-on-ones, Demarcus Van Dyke, Demarcus Van freaking Dyke was getting the best of 84. Saying, wow. Yeah. yeah See, it's... and that's the thing I miss about not seeing it in myself because yeah. I have to read what everyone is, is tweeting about it. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, and I've heard uh, conflicting things, obviously. Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know. I, I hope that the case is, I like the kid. I mean, when I interviewed him, he was really cool and I agree. He's huge. Like standing next to him, I mean, I felt like, you know, a midget, which I do standing next to most people. But anyway, he, he's huge. Um, he's always smiling. Like he's always, always smiling. And I love that about him. So I hope I hope he's figured it out. And I hope that he can be a, a integral part of this offense because I yep. just kind of like the kid. But, you know, Zimmer's not going to fool around. I mean, you don't – he's not a coach. He's not a Leslie Frazier. Yep. He's not going to be like, okay, you know, well, whatever. I mean, uh, he, he – uh, what do, did you think of – what did you think of Zimmer, though? Oh, my God. <laughs> did you not – like, I, I, I told my husband, I'm like, you know, I love you, but if Zimmer came calling, I'm saying, you know, because I just love that guy. Like, he's dropping F-bombs at practice and the shit he says – or crap he says to the guys mm. – hilarious well, see, the thing is uh the practice that we went to he wasn't really like that outspoken zimmer guy that you see in hard knocks you see and all, all the the mic'd up stuff uh is really more low-key just really more uh teaching and you know when he's talking to his press conference uh the word teaching you know comes up so much and it's it's quite a departure you know like when he was first hired we all heard the sound clips better get your mind right i'll get it right for you and we're thinking, as we got this hot head, hot headed coach who's just mad at the world and angry all the time. That that's really not the thing. Uh, no, I mean, I don't think I don't think yeah. he's mad. He's yeah. but like you know, he, this this the smart ass things he says to the guys. Yeah. You know, like I remember last year when I was down there, um, Rudolph got his uh, his big contract extension, mm -hmm. and so you know he caught the ball and and whatever. And so Zimmer was like, "Oh yeah, I see you're finally in that paycheck we just gave you." And you know, he just he's got this this smart ass sense of humor that I absolutely love that I saw a lot of last year, yep. but teaching is absolutely 
his number one thing. I mean, he's, mm. I, I was so, he's just so impressive. And he gave me a fist bump, which is awesome. Really? Yeah. Uh, wow. Before the night scrimmage, uh, he was just wandering around. I think he's talking to his daughter or something. I walked by, it's like, hey, good luck night, coach. Even, even though, thinking back, that was really stupid to say because, of course, we're going to win. It's scrimmage. <laughs> right. We got, One of your sides will win. Then we got the little pound action going. It, it was a lot of fun. And the thing is, like, he's, you know, like you said, smart ass. He's very blunt. And when he gets angry, it's because he expects more out of you because he knows that you're capable of it, like a, a, like a good teacher would do. Right. Exactly. Yeah. He's fantastic. I yeah. love him. I'm so glad he's ours. Uh, let's see uh, some other random camp stuff. Babs, uh, the, the experiment's over. <laughs> oh my God. I think this, uh, Christina, I can't think of what her Twitter handle is, but on, um, she had tweeted the only person I can't stand to watch, um, less than Matt Khalil is Babs. <laughs> and that's pretty bad because I, yeah. I can't stand Matt Khalil. Um, he just he can't get off the ball. He's just not quick enough. He and he's not gonna you know, overpower anyone in the NFL. And he's definitely gonna be one of the first cuts when it gets down to seventy five in what is it, three, four weeks. Uh but they they can keep him on the international you know, practice squad exemption. But I wonder if he's even worth it, to be honest. Well, no, from everything I've read he's yeah. not. He's, I mean, he doesn't have any redeeming value right now plus the thing is it would be different if he was like 21 years old 22 years old i, I could see them taking a flyer on it but he's i believe he's 28 not going to be able to teach a new dog uh old dog new tricks and the my, my favorite part was during the one-on-ones uh it was bar uh, up against babs <laughs> that must have been dirty oh uh, man i i feel like bar mercy ruled them a little bit because <laughs> I like uh, well. Number one, he didn't bull rush him, which I'm pretty sure Barr could have taken a Babs because Babs just has terrible footwork and has no balance. Uh, but also, Barr basically just uh, they went at it twice, and Barr basically just put a shoulder on him, gave him a spin move twice, and I was like, "All right, well, yeah, we're done here." That was fun. Yeah, and while we're on left tackle, um, Khalil. <sighs> yeah. Now, all right. So I have a theory that I postured on the last purple for the win. I, Matt Khalil is a, a fantastic guy, um, is really cool with the media, really awesome with the fans. He was the one, uh, well, him, Babs, and Cordero were always the one, like, hanging out in the lines, you know, signing extra autographs. Uh, well, Teddy, too, I guess. And the thing is, Ed is Pizza Place Biology, which is right across from the facilities. Uh, if you brought in your media pass, apparently, uh, allegedly, you know, one of the guys said this, uh, he would buy you lunch just because he's really? a cool dude. Yeah. That's and, a very cool thing. And I have like this really deep psychological theory that I'm a posture um, is that he doesn't love football, but he was just born into a body that was meant to play football. That would explain a lot. Yeah. So I mean, he, he doesn't play with any passion or any, there's no grind there yeah. at all. Yeah. You don't see like, and again, you can be quiet and love the game. Like Teddy's a quiet guy who loves the game, and, but you know Khalil. There's an intensity there that you don't see yeah. in Khalil. And Khalil, you know, born into a football family, and then your brother Ryan, who is a very outspoken guy. Like you're not going to question Ryan Khalil's love for football. You know, center for the Panthers. Uh, you know, follows his brother to USC. You know, gets by on God-given talent, high school and even college. And then you know, once you get to the pros. You're in love with the paycheck and the money it can do for your family, but overall, you know, you don't love the game. It's tough to do a job if you don't like it. I mean, I love my job, mm. like love. If I won the lottery, I would still do my job because that's how much I love my job. But I'm very yeah. passionate about my job. He is not, he does not, there's not one ounce of passion there when I look at him, when I watch him play. And that's sad. It's like, you know, and because right now we have no other options. Mm. And, you know, it does kind of stink because I feel like he does get more flack than is deserved. Well, quasi deserved, but I feel like people go too far with him. And as a guy who potentially does not love the game, you know, that, that's just got to weigh on you. And we were talking about over the weekends, like, I feel really bad for guys who are born in NFL bodies who don't love the game, like potentially Matt Khalil. 
uh, Jonathan Martin comes to mind, and they're guys who would just rather be born as you know five foot seven, you know, 150 pounds, and they could do something else with their lives rather than have to play football. Okay, here's the thing though: you don't have to play football. No one is sticking a gun to your head and telling you you have to. Well, play see, the thing is, like, I mean, it, I get, it's if the you're born into the that body, then you know, Mac Leal, family pressure. Yeah, you, know, you play football. You're well, dominant in especially. high school, and you get the chicks. You go to college, just you can get by on talent. You're dominant, and you get the chicks. And then all of a sudden, you're drafted, and they're throwing money at you. And then that's when you realize, like, I don't really want to do this. But then you're kind of stuck. And if you quit, you're called a quitter. Right. And for him, like, is a special case because, he's, mm. like you said, his he was brought up to be a football player. Yep. I mean, from the time he was born, probably. So His mom's hot, too. Yeah. His mom's hot? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I, I looked up Rudolph's girlfriend, and if it's the one that, from, that he had last year, mm. she's not hot. Well. Blonde? Yeah. I don't, she looks weird. I don't, there's, I don't no, know. She, maybe she's, it's not, maybe, she's fantastic. Okay, well, maybe it's not, maybe it's a different blonde. Maybe he plays the field. I don't know. I would, wouldn't you? You know, when's a a tall, handsome, white uh, graduate from Notre Dame going to get ahead? You know, we, we use that line on Harrison, but it applies to Rudolph too. Oh yeah, well, I mean, and I actually think I think Rudy's better looking. Really? Yeah. I I think Rudolph kind of looks like uh, the Todd kid from Breaking Bad. I don't watch that, so I have no reference. Oh, there you go. I think he kind of looks like Thor. Last year when we were training camp, that's what I kept, when I was looking at him, that's what I kept thinking is he kind of looks like Chris Hemsworth. And, you know, of course, that's my wheelhouse. So then, of course, I was going to think. Mean, Harrison is very attractive. Mm-hmm. There's something, I, and maybe it's because I don't like his super shaved head. I don't know. There's just something about him. I can't figure it out what it is. But he has a, he's a superior ass. I will uh, say that. Now, is it like uh, when Jax had a shaved head at the start of season three of Sons of Anarchy? It is pretty much just like that. Yeah, there you go. And I don't like long hair on men, but Jax, yeah. he needs long hair. Yeah, oh, there you go. Uh, well, some other train camp things. I guess we got to talk about Teddy. Um, he looked really smooth. I didn't make very many mistakes. A lot of seven on sevens, eleven on eleven drills. Uh, I did notice though that you know, in in all out eleven on elevens, he took absolutely zero chances which I was kind of surprised by, you know, you think training camp, especially training camp last year when Teddy was throwing picks all over the place. Uh, I did read he threw a couple of picks in the night practice last night, so maybe starting to open things up a bit. Uh, But there were some really pretty chemistry connection balls between him, Charles Johnson, uh, beating Rhodes a couple of times, which, you know, we've seen isn't, you know, that short of an order or excuse me, that tall. Right. Yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, Rhodes is good. All right. So right, he is good. Yeah. So I couldn't figure that out, but, uh, I saw a lot of checkdowns, a lot of outlets, and I was like, meh. You know, we kind of saw the story last year. I was kind of hoping he'd push it more downfield, but then again, yeah, you don't want him throwing up hospital balls or make mistakes either. Maybe he's just worried about getting creamed. I mean, I know he's got the red jersey on and everything, and no, I mean, they're not going to hit him, but I mean, you can't look at Khalil and feel confident yep. that he's going to protect you. You know what I mean? And they could be just be playing it. It's kind of conservative in training camp. I mean, mm. you have no idea what kind of plays they're calling for him. Yeah. And, well, that's kind of funny because uh, Sean Hill uh, at the night scrimmage, when he was operating, he was out there. He did not give an F. <laughs> he was throwing it all over the place. Really? Yeah. And he was uh, – yeah, yeah, he was throwing some tight windows. He was making some great throws. I, I, like, he really benefited from digs and vice versa. He made a couple of mistakes, but you know, like you said, I I think he just went out there happy to play football and just just slinging it. It was it was pretty fun to watch. That's cool. Yeah, I'm kind of concerned that you know, I mean, our de- our our depth at quarterback is terrible. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm fine with Hill. Uh, you know, if Teddy, you know, unfortunately gets like hurt or something. Uh, I don't. He's like he's never going to be pulled for ineffective play. I don't really see that. Uh, yeah, but Sean Hill and we stepped in for Stafford a couple of years ago. Uh, looked okay. You know, looked okay in time. St. Louis. We actually played him in the first week. Um, but as far as what this offense, um, you know, wants to do with Adrian back with McKinnon back there as well, I I think he'll be fine. I think he'd be okay. And it, kind of a weird note uh, pointed out the 
when they go 11 personnel, you got Adrian, you got Rudolph at tight end, and then you got um, you know, Wallace, CJ on the outside, right in the, in the slot. And then on the bench, you have Michael Pruitt, you have Jarek McKinnon, you have Cordero, you have Stefan Diggs. So you know, what was once our um, yeah, anemic skill position players is now like a huge position of strength. Right. I mean, and that does obviously having all those weapons makes any average quarterbacks better, right? Because you have all this talent, but in depth, but I don't know. I just, it was like Sean Hill. I'm excited. Not. I'd rather have Sean Hill than Matt Castle last year. Okay. Why? Uh, Because I I feel like Castle does force things in in actual game situations, more prone to make mistakes. And I, I know it just basically said the same thing about Hill in the scrimmage. Uh, but when he's gotten into actual games, he is relatively conservative. And with Zimmer's defense and with you know Adrian and McKinnon back there, yeah, a conservative veteran guy who's not going to make too many mistakes, that's going to be perfectly fine. All right, you sold me. But again, that's absolutely like Alamo, like crap is at the fan. But b- beyond that, Mike Kafka's garbage and Taylor Heineke is like five years away from being a, a third-string NFL quarterback. Yeah, and I mean, I realize that you know, Teddy crossing fingers is our franchise quarterback yeah. because I believe firmly that he is. Mm. They they need to start kind of figuring out what to do when he's done. I mean, I realize he's young and everything, but, you know, you kind of got to have a pipeline there. Uh, it, it's all right. I'm sure we'll, yeah, Heineke may not be a hit. He might be, who knows. And I'm sure that, you know, Spielman will keep churning out like seventh, you know, sixth, seventh on draft of agent quarterbacks that, Norv or you know Scott approve of, and then we'll go from there. I'm just so freaking excited about this team. I seriously am. Like if we if we didn't have that question mark in Khalil, oh man. I mean, yeah. it, and the that's thing is, the like, biggest thing. It, it is the biggest question mark remaining on the team. Uh, you know, if he does get a, a little mojo, a little swagger back, you know, maybe starts out with two good games, even though we're playing San Francisco with Alden Smith, and then who do we play second week? I have it written down. Oh, oh, Lions. So we got Ziggy Ansah coming in, who absolutely um, did terrible things to Khalil last year. <laughs> dirty, uh, dirty things. Oh, uh, I was going to say something grotesque. But um, right. <laughs> if he can somehow get a draw uh, you know, rel- in a relative sense against those two, uh, that might give him some confidence going. Because Alden Smith, Ziggy Ansah, ain't nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I I hope so. I mean, I just, yeah. I fear for Teddy's safety. That's mm-hmm. my biggest thing. It's like, please don't kill our quarterback. Yep. You know, just your job is to protect him. Don't, don't let him down. And, and as far as, you know, you can see in you know, non-contact 11-11s or quote-unquote non-contact and then one-on-one drills, uh, I, I was pleasantly surprised by Mike Harris, how he's holding up at right guard. Uh, again, I don't think he's ever going to be, you know, superstar or anything like there, but someone who can be, decent mm-hmm. um as uh you know as the opposite guard of fusco as opposed to what charlie johnson was last year um, yes, yeah we'll take garbage. that and it, it is nice to see clemmings back uh, it is nice to see load hold back and looking in very fine form I, i'm very excited about uh, what we saw saw the big phil and you know tyrus thompson just kind of there chilling and right. then we got joe berger who's you know, gonna be an okay veteran can plug and play can play all three interior line spots if needed and I, I mean, just by people getting healthy, you know, Sullivan was dinged up last year as well. Uh, Fusco, obviously, Khalil had the thing on both knees and, and load hole back from the torn boob. Uh, it, it's all, <laughs> and, and then you draft a fistful of guys on the O line, and it's it, it almost goes from a major weakness to a major strength just by getting people healthy. This is true, but. Mm. Last year, I was so, I mean, every single time, I mean, I was, I swore at Matt Khalil more times than I can even tell you. And then it came out that he was playing hurt or injured. And it's like, okay. So then I'm like, all right, I'm gonna cut the guy some slack, get him healthy, see what he can do. And then he absolutely shits the bed at training camp. Mm -hmm. I have no, I'm like, I'm done. Like I'm, it's, this is how I feel about Matt Khalil is how I feel about the twins right now. Now, glass half full Vikings fan, you could be like, well, you know, he's going up against uh, Everson Griffin and Anthony Barr and ahead of schedule, Daniil Hunter. Um, yeah, 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 you know, it's a good talent. I mean, it is. <laughs> it is. But you know he's bad. 
Yeah. I mean, he might be a fabulous person and I'm sure he is. And, mm. you know, I don't like say anything about him personally or his family. I, I don't do that. I just, I judge you based on what you do on the field. Yeah. Unless you like beat your kid or your wife, then I judge you for that too. Oh. But being a great guy isn't earning your paycheck. Uh, also random thing uh, before we move on uh, the linebackers. So you got, obviously got bar at strong side and then you got, um, you know, Greenway and Audie was getting a lot of one work in the middle, but uh, Eric Kendricks was at the first team nickel with Barr. That's Sex. disgusting. Sexy. Yeah, yeah, I know. And Barr is going to be moved all over the place. And even being unconditioned, he still looked pretty effing good. Oh, he's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, he's great. So who? So was Ch- was Greenway wearing the green sticker? Uh, I actually didn't even look for that. Okay. Because I know when Greenaway was hurt, hmm. Barr um, was wearing the green sticker, which hmm. I thought was really interesting last year. Yep. Um, I just feel like this is the transition. Hmm. I mean, Ch- Chad's not got too many more miles left on him, you know? Yep. And so I think this is kind of, you know, him handing the reins over to the young kid. Um, and I'm excited because Barr is ridiculous. I mean, and it's great that he can move. I mean, they can, hmm. he's going to kill people. Hmm. <laughs> he is. Actually, interesting little nugget. Um, Zimmer's really talking up Hodges, and he's starting to get some time uh, with the ones at, at middle linebacker. And he's always been a guy who I, I feel like when he's on the field, good things happen. He just, for some reason, can never get on the field. It's like always Audi gets his shot before Hodges does. And, yeah, I, I know the Vikings Rubes and Vikings Twitter loves Mike Maudie, but uh, Hodges is the way better Penn State linebacker prospect. No, I I really actually – like Hodges a lot. Mm-hmm. And I'd love to see him get more time. Yep. So I, I wouldn't be shocked by the year, like the th- three starting linebackers, however you want to take that since, you know, sub packages, everything now, but you know, Hodges, Kendricks, Barr, I could see that maybe like week nine. Cause why not? I'm just, I, I'm just trying to contain my excitement because yep. I am so excited about, about this team. It's like, I'm trying not to go like total PA and Rube here, yep. but it's the future looks very, very bright. Yep. Uh, uh, speaking of bright, uh, let's see a couple people I met at camp. Um, oh, uh, Arif, obviously. <laughs> I love Arif. Yeah. I love giving him shit. Uh, let's see. It, Inman has been on the show a bunch of times. Um, uh, Andrew Kramer, 1500, uh, Venzel. I met your, uh, your boy, Venzel. Did you tell him I said, Hey, I forgot. We had we were celebrating our anniversary. What was that? And it's like three months that he hasn't unfollowed me yet. Oh, or there blocked you me. Yeah, it was special. We had a moment. Yep. Uh, see, Master was cool. Um, Wabi was wearing aviators, trying to look all all badass. But we know. Did you like talk to him? Oh no, just beyond the basic introductions. That's about it. Ah, I'm not a fan. Oh, why not? I'm just totally not a fan. I mean, did I understand. Did I mean, he I hit on you? What? Did he hit on you? Did he no. hurt you? No. No, just the other one. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's about that. Uh, but, hey, uh, we both have to go next year, and we both have to make it a great time. Oh, I'm going next year. Yeah. 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 And, and then um, I can nudge you into traffic like I almost did with Arif when Xavier was headed to the sidelines and almost killed all of us. That happened to me with um, Harrison Smith, actually. Yeah. I wasn't really kind of paying. I was like tweeting something mm. and the play came really close and I got out of the way at the last minute. And then I thought, you know what? I should have just let him hit me. Like he would have been laying on top of me. That would have been kind of awesome. You know, broken, few broken bones. You know, what's that? You probably would have gotten season tickets out of it. Right. Or media access for life. Oh man, that would be awesome. Uh, because that was actually my first time actually like down on the sidelines for like actual NFL player stuff. And it's kind of scary. It, it's literally like, these people should not be this large and move this fast. It's like uh, what I imagine me on the track for a NASCAR race would be. You know, I had the same experience last year because last year was my first year covering camp. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, first of all, I was, like, geeking out like you could not even believe. And second of all, yeah, I mean, I'm 5'3". You know, these guys are – I mean, I don't even think I came up to Phil Lodholt's belly button. I mean, they're they're just so huge. Mm-hmm. I mean, walk it when you – because, I mean, I – well, you, you weren't in that picture. Um, but when you walk in with them yep. and you've got them all around you, I, I felt like a three-year-old because they're just super huge. 
The only guy my size was Cheryl's. <laughs> Blair Walsh. I, I, I suppose. Because, I mean, I thought, oh, hey, you know, he's just a little bit taller than me. Yeah. There you go. Uh, trying to make a smooth transition from coming up short. It looks like the twins are unfortunately coming up short. Um, I haven't really been following, but apparently they've been getting their ass kicked as of late. You know what? I am so sick of this team. But Seriously. they're in the second wild card spot. No, I thought they were bounced out. I have no idea. No, they're not. I think they're uh, right now. They're out. I know that they're flirting with it, and um, I, I've seen many people who have the opinion that if they drop out of it, that there's no chance that they'll get back in. At this point, I don't want them to because they're just going to get their asses handed to them in the first round anyway. But yeah, it's a one game playoff. Anything can happen. No, I don't. Mm-mm. They, they're garbage right now. I oh, mean, they, they Di- started You're going to deny the people a game 163? Yes, I am. Oh. Just on principle. Because they started, and part of me is I'm pissed at myself because I bought in. Like, I bought into the hype. They weren't supposed to be that good this year. But then they started winning. And then you're like, oh, my gosh. And then we have Buxton, and we have Snow, and it's like, it, you know, I, I'm just sick of them. I mean, it's so bad that they're doing, uh, so I graduated from the University of St. Thomas, mm-hmm. and they're doing a big UST night at, at uh, Target Field like they did for the Johnnies, which are garbage. I'm sorry. Um, and I, I'm like, I don't want to even go to the game. I just want the hat because they make a hat like in the Tommy colors. Yeah. And I'm like, so what I did is I bought an $18 ticket and paid the fees just so I can get my hat. I'm not even going to the damn game. So I actually bought an $18 hat basically. Well, it was more than that because then you have fees and it was like 25 bucks. Mm. But it's, you can't buy it anywhere. You like, you have to, and I wanted it really badly. Yeah. And besides Howard, um, Howard Sinker, um, yeah. who's been on the show. Yeah. Um, he told, he used season tickets. So he's like, ah, eh, if I go that, if I go to the game that night, I'll pick it up for you. So I might not even have to go there. I might just get my hat. I'd give my, I would give my ticket away to somebody. I might, I might just walk down there and be like, you want to watch this garbage? Go right ahead. So. Say they don't make the playoffs, or say ooh, say they sneak into the one game playoff, somehow win that playoff game, somehow get the best of whoever they play in the first round, and then get to the ALCS, and then we have a little hope. Are you? Uh, I'm sorry. Were you drinking before the podcast? Maybe no. Okay, because no, that's not happening. So you're telling me that there's a 0% chance that the Twins could somehow luck box their way to the ALCS? Yes. What about the ALDS? Yes. Uh, Actually, I, there's a less than one or less than 0% chance that they make it to the ALCS. No, I, I think they could easily get a little hot streak going, get into the one-game playoff, win that, because... Of course, we love our hashtag game 163. And then um, ALCS, you're in the tournament. Weird things happen. Okay, Andy. May not have pitching, but hey. eating those marijuana brownies. May may not have pitching, but who knows? Who needs it? (laughs) Who who needs quality pitching in the playoffs? Uh, Nobody. I mean, you you don't need. And you know what? You don't even need to hit. Like, you don't even have to get. You don't even need to get hits. They can't even, they can't, not even can they not score runs. They can't even get hits. This team is, is horrible right now. Sorry. They're just garbage. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of fortunate because plus, you know, with snow struggling a little bit and they already got you know, bucks up here. I mean, what's left? What hope is left to sell? You know, I don't know. I mean, that was always the thing. It's, it was all in for the last few years, like, oh, you know, if they're going to be great. I mean, they've got yeah. these young prospects and they're coming up and it's going to be awesome. And well, they're here now. And you basically have no pitching. And it's just, it's just garbage. Something that's not going to be garbage is uh, outdoor hockey. Hey, uh, Wild Blackhawks, February 21st at TCF Bank Stadium. Uh, you going to try to go? I don't want to oh, see it. First of all, I'm a freeze baby. Yep. So outdoor games in the end of February does not appeal to me at all. Mm-hmm. But I am going to go to that alumni game. Yep. I cannot freaking wait for that. I mean, I was a huge North Stars fan. 
Now, Huge. do do they count as the alumni, though? What do you mean? Well, did history move to Dallas, so are they technically part of that? So is the alumni game going to be like Manny Fernandez as the old school guy? No, they've got – oh, crap. Have you not seen the lineup? No, I don't look at such things. Oh, they got Cicerelli. They have Madonna. I mean, they have tons of guys coming up. Hey, Cicerelli. It's going to be amazing. Abu Willie Danza. Plett. Willie Plett. Can't sleep on Willie Plett. I'm pretty sure you just made up that name just to, just to dick with me, and that's perfectly fine. No, I would do that he to was you. a badass. He killed people. Like, well, they, he wow. Did, it, wait, no. All right, so who was he? What did he do? Oh, well, he was their enforcer mm. back in the day. Oh. He, I was a huge, like, huge, huge, huge fan. I actually, my parents had season tickets, so, um, and I had a really nice camera, and I had gone and taken a bunch of pictures of, of a bunch of the guys, especially Mike Madonna, because I had a humongously ridiculous crush on him, which of course every woman in young woman in Minnesota did at the time. Mm-hmm. Cause he had sick hockey flow, like really sick. Anyway. Um, so I, I had the pictures printed and I went to a practice cause you could go to the practices yeah. and waited at, well, I went with my cousin and we waited after yeah. and they, as the guys were coming out, I had a, a Sharpie and they were signing their pictures for me. So I have an, a photo album right now of all of these pictures signed by all these guys. Like, uh, Trent Klatt and Mike Madano and Neil Broughton. Um, I mean, I, John Casey. I mean, there's just tons. It's just, yeah, I miss those guys. It was really hard for me. It took me a while before I could really like the wild. Oh, my God. Willie Plitt's an actual person. Oh, my God. Look at that I air. Would lie to you. Look you at have that to air. Google, Google Willie Plett. Um, actually, I tweeted it. There's a highlight video of all the fights he, and some of the fights he got in. Like, he was mm-hmm. like, he would hit people over the head with a stick. He he looks like a combination Dolph Lundgren with Val Kilmer from Top Gun. Yeah, he was badass. You have to you have to seriously go back in my timeline and fire. I'll tweet it to you. Um, you have to watch that video. Okay, it's awesome. All right, uh, let's see what else is there. So, uh, the thing about the Winter Classics to me, I'm not a hardcore hockey fan. I'm slowly trying to get into it. Uh, the office in the house that uh, we bought in our closing here on a couple weeks uh the office is actually painted wild colors ew so no, well i have to debate now do i, I want to just paint it a neutral color or do i think leaving the wild colors will actually help the resale value because you, you know how people are up here not in an about. office no no all right um but i never got about the winter classic is the seating you're playing in baseball or football stadiums and yeah, a front row seat is still going to be, what, 100, 150 feet from the game? Oh, yeah. I mean. So I, I get the novelty and it's kind of neat and stuff, but I'm like, eh. You know, like I said, I I wouldn't go to an outdoor game. Like, this, I'm so bad that, um, well, we didn't get go for football season tickets this year because their prices were crazy increased. But, you know. Because we're winning the ship. Yeah. So anyway. um. It's like kind of, you know, maybe give fans a break. We've been supporting you when you were shitty for how long, and now you're going to jack up your prices. Okay, fine. Um, but I wouldn't go to the, like, late November game because it's too cold for me. Mm-hmm. So you're thinking end of February? I mean, I'm going to have to have those little portable heater things that you stick in your mittens, like, all over my body. I'm going to, like, tape them all over my body. But I'm going to the alumni game. Well, it'll be like when they had to play that uh, Monday Night Football game at the bank. Uh, after the dome collapsed, you know, right. the far, far on the ground game. Yes. And, you know, yeah. it, when people were sneaking in, uh, like, you know, airplane bottles of booze and the, everyone was wrapped in like snowmobile gear and stuff. That's how they used to rock at the Met. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you have your, you have your schnapps, mm. you have your snowmobile suit. That's how they did it back then. There you go. Um, all right. So speaking of the Gophers, that's a pretty smooth segue. Uh, I'm, so last year, I quasi-jumped on the Gopher bandwagon. Uh, truth be told, I have, I wasn't really a gigantic Gopher fan growing up, mostly because they kind of stank, uh, aside from a couple of the um, Marion Barber, Lawrence Maroney years. And, but they are my geographical default D1 team. Like I, I love college football. I just never really had a team, which I was always kind of sad about. But I'm actually pretty excited about this year's team. Well, you should be. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Except, except for Leidner. Eh, I know. He, he's the best. No, he, he's like Diet Tebow. 
He's like, if <laughs> Tim Tebow was half as good of a college quarterback and right-handed, it would be Mitch Leiter. Nice. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a huge fan of his actually. And you when know, we lost Cobb, I mean, there's some. Mm-hmm. There's some going to be some holes, but we got that kid. I can't, I can't ever remember his name, but he turned down Ohio State. Yeah. To stay here. Uh, he's a high school senior. Yeah. 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 So he's got plenty of time to change his mind. No. No, don't say that. Uh, so you're I telling can, me. I lobbed that over Ted. Mm. Well, so you're telling me that 17 year old kids don't change their mind. Why you got to do that to me? <laughs> really? I thought we uh, were friends. Uh, yeah, we are. Oh, speaking of which, I was looking at the, the schedule beforehand, and yeah, that's one of the reasons I'm pretty excited because the road games, which has always been the Achilles heel of this team, even under Jerry Kill, there's only one of the four in-conference games that I'm actually kind of worried about on the road, and that's the at-Ohio State game. Yeah, well, I mean, it, it's an embarrassment of riches over there. I mean, they get mm-hmm. everybody. <laughs> it's just like, it's so unfair. I mean, with uh, wide receiver Braxton Miller? Right, exactly. Right. Oh, I'm sorry. We're, our quarterback depth is just so great that uh, your U.S. quarterback, you now need to be a wide receiver, which, you know, is Which nice. I, I wish they would have done with Leiter instead of making Strebler wide receiver, because I actually think Strebler has a chance to be a decent quarterback. I actually liked Strebler when he was yeah. playing. I, I was kind of surprised by that. But, you know, I don't know. I, I always bitch about Ohio State because I hate them. I mean, I might even possibly hate them more than the Badgers. Because it's just, it's ridiculous. It's like they get everything. I have but, those ads. No, but hey, it's okay. And it's going to be next man up, even though Cobb absorbed like 90,000% of the carries. Who's going to be like uh, the Edwards kid? You know, Braylon Edwards' little brother? You can step up be the bell cow? You know, I didn't know he was Braylon Edwards' brother. Yeah. That's not good. Braylon What's Edwards sucks. Berkey? Ah, well, it, no, he had I had him moments. at fantasy football. He sucked. He always, always, always let me down. Well, see, I, I felt really bad for him because the Browns really effed him over, mainly because you're drafting a Michigan guy and bring him into Ohio. So that's really going to set off the fan base uh, to begin with. And, you know, the Browns are too, probably too stupid to realize that. Uh, but you know, time with the Jets, he had some decent moments. Decent doesn't win fantasy football championships, Andy. No, it's okay. Uh, I have my draft set up for auto draft, both of them. You do? Yeah. I am way too much of a control freak for that. Well, see, one is a a three keeper league, and I'm only keeping two. Uh, but I have my pre rankings for who my third person is going to be in the draft, or my first pick in the draft is going to be. Uh, I'm not going to say it because I know those jerks in the league listen to uh, all the various shows, and I don't want them to bone me. Because there's there's one guy I'm really shooting for. I'm gonna get him. What position? Uh, running back. Okay. Yeah, doesn't matter. And my two keepers in that are running backs as well, uh, Forte and Adrian. So I, I'm. I don't going... think I think keeper leagues suck. You shouldn't be able to keep it. You shouldn't be able to hang on to a guy. Uh, I like keeper leagues. I, I don't like dynasty leagues. You know where you basically only draft rookies. I don't like that either. That's a little too intense. But I think Keeper League is uh, yeah, a nice, decent mix, and whereas the other one is just a, a, a redraft league. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, I, don't even, I don't even know if I'm going to play fantasy football this year. I was in four leagues last year. Hmm. It was a lot. It's very intense. Now, were you in a Daily Norseman League? No, I was not. because, oh, they, because they, you're not a writer? <laughs> wow. I cannot wait till you come up here. I mean, yeah. seriously, I cannot wait. This is going to go down. Like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you down. Anyway. Oh, so you mean it's going to be awesome when we can randomly just hang out and S-talk each other and have a couple, six, seven, eight, nine beers? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. there you go. No, I, di- I didn't do the Norseman League because they did defense, like yeah. individual defense. And that's no. too much work for me. Like, I don't want that. It's just like... If I can pick a defense, great. If you have individual people on defense, no thanks. Well, if it's a keeper league, you just take Kendricks, and then he's going to get you 12 tackles a game, maybe a sack here and there, and maybe a pick. And bar. Yeah. They're going to be so sick. Oh, yeah. my God, I'm so excited. Yep. Uh, Go back to the Gophers real quick. 
for some reason. I'm 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 pretty excited. Uh, September third, Thursday, hosting TCU. Uh, it's going to be a big statement game. They got my home, even though they're blown out. Was it thirty-five-seven down in Waco? I know Fort Worth last year. Yeah, it wasn't pretty for sure. Yeah, and I think that was the fourth preseason game. I want to say because didn't they start out three and zero, and then they went down to TCU, and it was like, oh, all right. Yeah, don't yeah, don't get so excited. Yeah, <laughs> yeah about that. Uh, but o- overall schedule, uh, the Big Ten, anyways, at Northwestern, W at Purdue, they're terrible. Uh, Nebraska at home, Michigan at home. Who knows what Harbaugh is going to be year one? At Ohio State, eh. at Iowa, who Ferentz should have been fired like five years ago. And then uh, Illinois and Wisconsin at home. Great things could happen. They're going to lose that Ohio State game. It all happens at the bank. Ah, uh, it's okay. We'll go twelve and one. Yes, love it. Sell that hope. Yeah, except then we'll play Ohio State in the Big Ten championship game. Right. And they'll put up a 70 burger. I hate them. Would that make your, your year? All right, so say the Gophers lose by two touchdowns at the Horseshoe um, on the November 7th game. And then Big Ten Championship game, uh, Ohio State's undefeated, primed to make another run in college football playoff. And then all of a sudden, the Gophers, you know, carrying you know, like maybe two or three losses, but still win the Big Ten West or Legends or whatever the hell it used to be called. And then they just eke out a last-second field goal, a ruin Ohio State's dreams of repeating as college football playoff back-to-back champions. And, and then we could beat by Bama by seventy in the first round of the playoffs. But, I don't but care. it wouldn't matter because yeah. we would have beat Ohio State. Could yes. you imagine your your s talking ammo over Ted? Oh my God, he would he would die. And it's funny because. He was born here and would lived here until he was like twelve or thirteen, and mm-hmm. so he was, he likes the Gophers. He loves yep. Jerry Kill, but he's he he went to Ohio State, so he's a, he's a huge OSU guy. Mm. Um, I would love it. Like I would, I mean, I would, yeah, that would be pretty freaking awesome. See, I, I would love to go to Columbus and hang out with Ted for a game. Except all of the bars that he went to in college are probably closed and factories by now. That is no lie. I mean, he is or old. condos. He's very old. Uh, that Ted's funny. Uh, speaking of Ted, uh, let's get to the Twitter poll. Uh, question of the week, who just switched switch spots with? Minnesota athlete. And uh, you went with Everson so you could see Harrison's junk. <laughs> which, is a, which is an answer. Not just uh, Harrison. Hunters, too. That's my boy right now. He's like, whoo, smoke show. And you know what? As far as football goes, he's definitely ahead of where... A lot of people thought he was going to be. I think he's going to see some time in some sub packages and maybe wreak a little bit of havoc. Kind of like how you know, Michael Johnson uh, in Zimmer's defense when he came in out of Georgia Tech, uh, long, lean defensive end, pass rusher guy who was, wasn't ready coming out. He was very raw, uh, but still put up a couple sacks in some sub packages for Zimmer early on. We can see it. So, how does he pronounce his first name? Daniil. Daniil. Uh, oh, hilarious story. Um, uh, so in- Inman relayed the story to me. Apparently, bench warmer Bob, you know him? Of course. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah. Uh, So he- he's coming in, trying to be the, the BMOC, big man on campus, glad hand everyone. And then, um, you know, players are coming out, stretching, and he goes up to Hunter. He's like, Daniel, Daniel, Bob, nice to meet you. And then um, Dan- Daniel basically crushes, lurts him his hand in a handshake. He's like, it's Danelle. Or Daniel. It's Daniel. pronounced Daniel. Yeah, yeah. Daniel. <laughs> That's a funny story. But I it mean, it's, it's, I just can't, every time I look at it, it's like, it's mm. Danielle. <laughs> like, I can't get past it. It's like, I, you know, why would you do that to your kid? Also, by the way, uh, Randall McDaniel was at the, at the night scrimmage and you know, introducing all that good stuff. They could still play. So if we need help at right guard, uh, you know, just toss him in. Even though, yes, I know he was left guard. Uh, actually, you know what? Hell, Fusco would move back to right for Randall McDaniel, right? He wouldn't have a choice. He'd be like, dude, you're out. <laughs> McD- Do you know Randall McDaniel's actually a teacher? Yeah, he teaches on the stage, doesn't he? I know, it's so cute. I just love <laughs> it. It's like this big, huge guy, and I think he teaches like he teaches in elementary school. So like these little tiny kids and this big, huge man, it's awesome. So cute. Yeah, see, that's kind of uh, an offshoot of what we were talking earlier with like Matt Khalil, Jonathan Martin. Guy born to a football body. You know, McDaniel obviously loved the game, though, but then – 
yeah, he obviously has other passions as well. Absolutely. And I mean, that's fantastic because he's not going to be one of those guys who, you know, goes broke in, you know, five years out of the league or whatever. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I just, I love him. Like, and it's probably because he's a teacher, but he, he's awesome. But it was really confusing. Speaking of broke, uh, the whole promotion that uh, I think they ran with uh, K-Fan where Associated Bank is like, Randall McDaniel lost his wallet. Help him find it. Now, I actually legitimately for a second thought that that was real, not like a promotion. <laughs> I was like, oh, well, no wonder all these NFL guys are broke. They're just losing their wallets. All <laughs> Left and right. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so back to the Twitter poll. Uh, Switching spots uh, with a Minnesota athlete. We got uh, Anthony Marco says, Joe Maurer, I would insist on his day off, get paid a bleep ton of money to hang out in the dugout, chew seeds, and drink Gatorade. Eh, That's not a bad life. That's not a bad life. Plus, you got a beautiful wife. You actually have legitimate Minnesota twins as your kids. And, And you know, you don't have to get get up in the middle of the night with them because you know damn well they got a nanny. They have seven au pairs. Probably. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Brian Heights says, uh, Maya Moore, uh, what it must be like to actually put a championship banner in the Raptors. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome right there. That's pretty good. Let's see. Rachel says, definitely not a Twins player. Yeah, don't blame her. Uh, let's see. Adam Carlson said, Maya Moore as well. Uh, Vanilla Gorilla says, at the moment, Teddy Bridgewater. Dude's on the team looking up, and he's absolutely loved. Yeah, that's fair. That's solid. Yeah. And even at, I was thinking back, even at the height of – Ponder, which is an oxymoron, I know. I don't think he's ever beloved like Teddy is. Or no, Brace. no, yeah. no. And like even thinking back as a kid, like Dante, when he's lighting things up, I never really got that sense that he was uh, like the guy. It was always Randy Moss. Well, I mean, it's Randy Moss. It's pretty, I mean, even though Culpepper had definitely pretty a couple of pretty really amazing seasons, Randy Moss is the guy. Get your roll on, baby. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ted Glover said, Joe Maurer, bilateral weakness, awareness, and understanding. Yada, yada, yada. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Uh, someone said Chuck Knobloch. Okay. And he apparently was joking. Because mm. he's like, because I said, really? He's a horrible human being. He's like, yeah, I was kidding. He's a total piece of crap. I'm like, yeah. well, thank you. Chank. Nab. And then you added Chuck Knobloch in one of the tweets? What? Yeah, you added Chuck Knobloch to one of the tweets. Oh, he did. So then our, our, then our conversation oh. about him being a piece of crap. Ah. Right. Well, you know, he's probably going to see that and he'll respond because Chuck Knobloch is uh, like kind of a Twitter um, savant. Really? Like, like he got into it with Gleeman um, for a while there. And it's just like, ah, oh, come on, Chuck. I can't I mean, deal with Gleeman, so I, I wouldn't have any idea. Really? I kind of oh. like Gleeman. Ugh. All right, so who are the top five Twin Cities sports media personalities slash writers slash bloggers slash everything uh, that you have issues with that you got beat? <laughs> oh, my God, there's so many. Um, I wouldn't put Gleeman in the top five. Okay. At one time, so I would Where do you think he'd be? Top 10, top 20? I don't know. There's a lot. Probably top 20. Yeah. Um, Vensel, at one time, would have been top five. Oh. Now he's my buddy. So, yeah, how, how you hate on the new guy? He's only been here a year. Because there was a few times where he was kind of an asshole to people, and I called him out on it. Anyway, um, let's see. Dan Barrero. Mm-hmm. Uh, PA. Yep. Um, anybody from the half S or not the half S morning show, the uh, Power Trip morning show on KFAN. Uh, it all, seems all like you're really going after one uh, grouping of people. I, I can't, I, I, I can't decipher what they all have in common. Oh, damn it! That's a pun as well. <laughs> oh, you didn't get that? No, I did not. That's completely unintentional because you're naming off. <laughs> You'll K- explain that to me later. No, well, you're naming off all K fan people, and I'm like, oh, huh, that's kind of weird. They'll have one thing in common, and it's like, oh, common man. I, you know, I, I don't like him. Yep. But I don't hate him. I mean, he's, you know, he's all right. Um, who else would I put on that list? Full disclosure, I, I love all the K-Fan people except for uh, the morning show. Like, hockey's cool. Like, meat sauce can be okay, but uh, no, I don't really like Korkov. I can't. I'm. It's like it's like listening into, I mean, and I used to be a huge K-Fan fan. Mm-hmm. Um, well, you know what? Jeff Dubay. I would put him in the top five, even though he's not really doing anything right now. 
top five sports media people in prison? He would be number one. Yeah. Um, anyway, getting back to the whole K-Fan thing. It's like yeah. I used to be a huge fan. Um, mm-hmm. Listened to every morning. Yeah. And it just got to the point where it's basically one big frat party. Like yeah. it's it's gotten so juvenile and so, so far away from sports that I can't listen. And and I can't listen to PA. Um, I can't. I mean, there's nobody on that stage. Ed Barrero, forget about it. I mean, he's so thin skinned. So yeah, I mean, that's basically my top five. Yeah, see, I didn't know that Mike Morris used to be on the the power trip. You didn't? No, because I'm a young gun, a young. Oh please, they didn't get rid of him that long ago. Well, I, I never really started listening to local sports radio until three, four years ago, maybe. Okay. Yeah. I was mainly a national guy. Okay. I don't really yeah. listen to Latin national either. Uh, you don't like Mike and Mike? Mag and Mike. Nope, don't listen. The wife loves Mike and Mike. Hmm. Maybe I'll have to give it a listen. Yeah, there you go. Um, let's see what else here. Uh, anything exciting coming up for you? I, big... I go back to work soon. Hey, that is the thing. August 17th. Now, how is this going to impact your writing schedule? I hate you. <laughs> I, I, I'm just trying to squeeze greatness out of you, Di. I hate you. What? I do. You're not telling me that if you put together like a Peter King style uh, Monday morning quarterback of just loose, random Vikings thoughts and call it dies season thoughts that it wouldn't get a ton of clicks. I don't know. It doesn't even have to be that good. Oh, it does because it's me and I'm no, a perfectionist. No, because people are starving like like Marvin. People are starving for like Marvin for just anything – purple related well right but when the season starts you know then it'll be relief a little bit of relief because fact, everybody will be writing about it all right so I, I don't write much um but i should put together a list of here are the top 17 viking season previews and do it in a slideshow style that would get probably twenty thousand hits <laughs> that's probably true and you wouldn't have to really do anything yeah and i wouldn't even be mad why would you be mad i don't know that's just that's just how things work nowadays, even though it's a no, because people always hate on the slideshows, including the people doing the slideshows, but they get all the clicks. I hate the slideshows. Like I legit hate the slideshows. So I was doing my, um, so on your purple for the win, you guys did the last one. I think it was the last one when you did the hottest quarterback depth chart thing. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. So Arif was like, we need your help. I'm like, okay, well, I was out shopping, so I had a, you know, little delay. But I got home, I did my research, and it's like every single thing I Googled about hot NFL quarterbacks was a slideshow. <laughs> well, that would be the easiest way to present it. It was just annoying. It's just, I'd like click. Well, like, who would be like, your top three there? Hottest quarterbacks? Depth uh, chart, yes. uh, Jimmy Garoppolo? Yeah. Damn, he's good looking. Yeah. Um, Cam Newton? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, see, we had Cam up there as well, except Derek Anderson is oh, his backup. Oh, my God. He, and he ruined really brought it. Him down. Like, yeah. I couldn't even put him on there. I'm like, way to go, Derek Anderson. <laughs> totally blew that for Cam. Mm. Um, I think number three would, you know, maybe Tim Tebow. Oh. He's pretty oh, good yeah. looking. Philadelphia was our number two because, they, you know, Bradford's decent looking. Sanchez is hot, and Tebow is, you know, very much eye candy. But that's the power of... Brady and Garoppolo is that even though there's only two of them, they they still win. <laughs> I hate Tom Brady, and so I was a little biased. I mean, he's a good looking man. I'm not saying he's not, but I just couldn't. He can't make top three for me. He probably be four. But there you go. You know. Uh, let's see. Come up from me. Uh, dad mode. The episode today was drinking in front of your kids, how tos, and random thoughts and advice. Uh, dad mode on Friday is. God, I can't remember off the top of my head. <laughs> It's something. It's, it's going to be some, now. It, it's going to be something good. Uh, purple for the win. Uh, we're getting into our three episode a week format. Um, probably not till season, maybe two a week during the preseason. Both be good times. Oh, and I have a, a little, little special announcement that will be made in the next couple of weeks of who our permanent standing Friday preview show guest is going to be. It's uh, it's going to be pretty good. I think you'll be surprised. Really? Yeah. 
Okay. I like surprises. Yeah. No, I so really look don't for, like surprises. So look for that in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, uh, well, but, I, when are you going to have me on any of those shows ever again? I don't know. You never ask. I didn't know I had to ask. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> It is starting to get to the point where I do get random, like, cold emails being like, oh, so, hey, when can I be a guest on your show? I write for XYZ spot. And I feel really bad because initially when we started up, uh, I would almost have to, like, beg people to come on the show. And now that it's getting a little clout, a little notoriety, it's just like, you know, I don't know if this person has enough of a following to you know, be worth having on the show Whoa. and, and cross mingle audiences. I, I know I feel so terrible about it. No, because you're you no, know, you should be proud. I mean you you've built this thing from the ground and you should be very proud of yourself. Mm. We just had a moment there. We did. Thank you, Mama. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh by the way, I do have mom issues, so I do kind of see you as a motherly figure. <laughs> Great. That's even though awesome. that we're even though we're the same age. We are not the same age. You are such a bad liar. All right, fine. Uh, no more lies, but we're out here. Follow us on Twitter at Andy Must Die. Subscribe race on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, all the places. The website is AndyMustDie.com. Uh, but, yeah, we're gone. Talk to you next week, episode 24. I'm Andy Carlson. She is... Die Murphy. Uh, thanks for listening. Have an awesome week, and, yeah, go Vikings. Go Gophers. I can't wait till our home hopes and dreams are crushed by November. The music was created and produced by Deeb. To hear more of his tracks, check out soundcloud.com forward slash Deeb. We needed to get this right.